Flam Fam! Welcome back to my channel. Ooh, my Mars Hydra just clicked on. Hi, <laughs> if you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is my messy jungle. If you are not new here, thank you for coming back. Hi! Love you. Anyway, so today I promise you I'm gonna keep this intro short and we're gonna get straight to the point. We are talking about Hoyas, all about the Hoyas. If you are new here, hi welcome we said that already but <laughs> um we love hoya so if you love hoya then definitely stick around because we talk about hoya a lot and i have lots of hoya content coming as i am moving everything from here into my new place and from here into my new ikea cabinet for all my baby hoyas so i'm excited to show you guys that process definitely stay tuned for that one announcement before I actually really get into what we're going to talk about. David and I are doing a live stream this weekend, I believe Sunday. I think it's the 27th. Don't quote me, but keep your eyes open for that. I will be posting a notification and everything so that you can put your reminder on for it. Anyway, back to Hoyas. Today we're going to be talking mostly about how do you get your Hoya to bloom because that is one of the most common questions that I get from you guys as well as why won't my Hoya grow? Like how come it's just slow as shit? So we're going to be talking about how to get your Hoyas to grow faster and how to get them to bloom for you. So I'm going to be straightforward from the get-go there is no secret recipe to getting your Hoyas to bloom. I am going to list out all of the things that you need to do to keep your Hoyas happy, healthy, and growing, and additional things that you can add if you want to help encourage blooming, absolutely. But there are some Hoyas that are just very, very stubborn and do not bloom, as opposed to other varieties that bloom very prolifically. Prolifically? That sounds weird. They're very, they're very, they're very prolific bloomers. Okay, bloomer. Okay. So that is really something that I want to highlight that I did not highlight in my original video because it's been like two years now. And when I recorded my original, like how to get your Hoya to bloom video, I really only had a handful of Hoyas. And I think I just kind of got lucky with that one blooming. Um, it was a Carnosa. They do bloom sometimes. <laughs> They're more easy to get a Carnosa Bloom than other Hoyas, but there's ones that are going to be a lot easier. If you're looking for a Hoya, just so you can experience the blooms at the end of this video, I'm going to talk to you about which varieties you should get, as well as some of the ones that I have here that I'm going to show you. So I am going to be showing you all of the Hoyas that I have currently, what, what just fell, in bloom including this Hoya Bertoniae, which is a very easy bloomer. And I just watched a video where Adam, I don't know if you guys follow Adam, his uh, handle is not dude. Um, and he's a Hoya lover as well. He posted a video where he was licking the bloom to taste the sap. And this is completely safe. It's completely fine. You could actually consume it if you wanted to. I don't recommend it because it'll probably make you sick, but it won't kill you <laughs> unless you're allergic to latex because the waxy substance that actually comes out of Hoya's is got latex in it. So I'm really tempted to lick it. Should I lick it? Oh my God. You guys, he wasn't wrong. It tastes sweet. What the hell? Okay, excuse me while I lick all of my Hoya blooms. This is the only one that's actually like open right now though, so it's kind of hard to tell. It is very, very bright out right now. I apologize for the lighting. Okay, if you have a Hoya bloom, pause this video and go lick it please come back and comment and tell me what it tastes like because that is crazy oh my god it's funny because everybody always says that they look like candy and they want to eat them and i'm like i don't think they would taste very good but honestly they kind of taste good anyway 
let's get into Hoya care. So I'm going to go over just like the basic care with you because if you don't have this down, then your Hoyas are just not going to be happy and they're not going to bloom. End of story. So first, obviously, we want to talk about water. So Hoyas are definitely going to be more drought tolerant than other plants. That's why we love them so much. They hold a lot of the moisture in their leaves. That's why they're so thick and waxy. This white pot is just like not translating well on camera. Let me pull down my Lacanosa for you because this one is also a very prolific bloomer. Put you back. Ooh, you're so tasty. Anyway, so this one has a ton of peduncles that I don't know if you could see. There's one here, one here. This one's working on something. This one's working on something. So this is the Hoya Lacanosa uh, Royal Flush that you're going to be seeing from Casa Farms. It's got like a very slight little splashiness to the leaves and it blooms like crazy for me. But I'm pretty sure that's the case with most Lacanosas. We've got like two more peduncles hanging out right here if you could see those. So this one was just in bloom for me. I showed it to you in my plant tour video. I can show you that same picture again on the screen now if you want to see what the bloom looks like it's like white and fuzzy with a little bit of yellow inside and now i'm curious what they taste like <laughs> that's fine but when it comes to watering it's going to vary hoya to hoya obviously the thicker the leaves the less water you're gonna to have to give them because they're gonna hold on to more of it but they are very drought tolerant with that said it depends so I can't tell you water your Hoya every seven days because it depends. Depends on the size of the Hoya, depends on the mix that you have it in, depends on the pot that you have it in. So I can't really say. The only thing I can say is that what you should be able to do is find a leaf and bend it. Do the taco test. See how nice and stiff that is? I know it doesn't need water. You want to test leaves that are down here as well as leaves that are up at the base. You wanna test a, a bunch of different leaves and make sure that they feel firm because if they don't feel firm, your girl is thirsty. I just recently watered all of mine, so none of them are gonna be floppy enough for me to show you what a thirsty Hoya looks like, but it's something that you kind of just have to get a feel for. And then once you have a feel for it, you can determine how many days your Hoya should go or you just see it all wrinkly over there in the corner and you're like oh oops sorry you're thirsty they are very forgiving very very forgiving they will not drop leaves for you the way that other foliage plants do if you skip a watering so we love Hoyas for that reason for sure and then the soil that you have it in if you have it in a very well draining soil then obviously your plant is going to need water more frequently, as well as if you have it in a ceramic pot versus a clay pot versus plastic, you guys know that the ceramic is not going to absorb the moisture the same way that the clay is going to and that plastic just doesn't absorb anything at all. So if you have your Hoya in a well-draining mix and in something that's just clay without a nursery container, in there, I have a nursery container in there. This would dry out so fast. I mean, and it, it does already as it is because it's right under a grow light. And that's another component to how often you're going to water your plants. If they're in really, really bright light and it's warm, they're going to dry out faster. So you kind of have to figure it out for yourself. But Hoyas are a very forgiving plant to do that with, if that makes sense. So that's my Hoya Lacunosa. And I'm going to pull down the Hoya Diptera for you next. So you guys would have already seen all of these if you watched my plant tour video, but this is my Hoya Diptera. And as you can see, she's blooming for me. This is the first time that this plant is blooming for me since I've had it over the last year and a half, maybe, I want to say. So maybe almost even two years this summer since I've had this plant and she's given me problems. The mealybugs love her, but she's bouncing back. She's got 
new growth in lots of different places. We've got this new vine wrapping around here that has lots of new growth on it. And um, I mean, she couldn't be that unhappy, right? Look at that. Sorry, it's very bright. It's still a little bit early. I wouldn't normally film this early, but it's uh, the only time that I have right now. So here we are filming and I just want this to focus because it's so stinking cute and I can't wait until it opens. I will definitely be posting this one to Instagram when it opens if you're interested in seeing what it looks like because it's still closed right now. They kind of have that little star shape when they're closed. Let me try and get it to focus better. Yeah, see that star shape that they have kind of when they're closed and then all of those little flaps will just like burst open. If you've never seen a Hoya bloom open, I definitely recommend looking that up on Instagram or, or on here to look at like a time lapse. They're really fun. Anyway, this is my Hoya Diptera and I wanted to talk to you about sun because if you noticed, some of these leaves are kind of bleachy and some of them are more green and that is because she was getting more sun at one point in time when these leaves were happening. So the newer ones are coming in a little bit darker green, but this is more of like a neon green plant, which is what I like about this Hoya. It is not like a dark, deep green the way that other ones are. So I thought it was interesting for that reason. Plus she's cute. They're smooth little leaves. I can't wait till she's like a nice big trailing plant. And I can't wait to see this bloom when it opens. Oh my goodness. So if it's getting really bright direct sun, as you could see, this leaves will get sun stressed. So this plant doesn't sun stress. They just kind of get lighter. They'll kind of bleach more than anything, but it's not necessarily damaging to the plant unless they start to yellow and fall off. So you have other Hoyas like this one where you can see that it's starting to stress in the corners there. This is the Hoya, I call it Gundam Wing, Gunung Gooding, but you could see when they sun stress, when they're getting bright light, they'll turn like a pinkish red hue. They just look like sun kissed. It's a better word than stressed, but it is, it's stress on the plant and that's its way of kind of protecting itself like sunblock. So if you want to sun stress your Hoyas, definitely start playing with moving them into a brighter light situation because they can handle it. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure the leaves aren't burning. But if you really, really want to, like you can move it into a brighter light situation. You might lose and burn all the old leaves, but the new growth should come in more tolerant of the new light that you're putting it under. So if you want to experiment with a plant that's not expensive, like a Hoya Sunrise is a fun plant to experiment with and they're very affordable and very readily available on the market right now and they easily sun stress. So if you're looking for a fun Hoya to play around with, sun stressing, that's definitely one to look for. I have some over there you guys would have seen in my house plant tour. So obviously if they're not getting enough light, they ain't gonna grow. They're just not. Like they simply are not gonna grow if you do not give them enough light. So these I have, this window here, the reason why it's so bright right now is because it is slightly southern facing, so I'm still getting, but it's eastern mostly, so I'm still getting some of that morning light as it's shifting over into the afternoon light, so that's why you can still see some of these patches of bright light over here and it's shifting as we speak. So definitely be mindful of that. And on that topic, humidity. These are gonna be absolutely fine in your regular house humidity. It's not going to affect them negatively at all, but if they're not growing, girl, you're gonna need to up the humidity if, if the lighting situation is already really bright. If your humidity situation is already really high, then maybe it's your light that's not bright enough. So I would definitely consider those two things if your Hoyas are not growing for you because if they're not growing for you and they're not throwing out new tendrils, then you're probably not gonna be getting a peduncle anytime soon if there isn't 
an inactive one already on the plant. So I'm going to pause you for a second because I do want to grab a couple of my Hoyas out of the greenhouse to show you what the peduncles look like when they're active, when they're inactive, when they've already had a bloom multiple times, like really old peduncles are kind of funny looking. And I can grab some of the ones that I have over here to show you how I up the humidity. So just give me one second and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. So first I wanted to show you how I up the humidity, especially for Hoya cuttings, if you're trying to get them to grow and root really quickly for you, or if you just have a stubborn Hoya plant that is not growing and you're getting frustrated with it and it's, it's still a small plant and you want it to grow because let me tell you, a Hoya is not going to grow if it is not established in its pot, usually. This is not always the case, of course, but if you have a Hoya cutting and it is being stubborn, just be patient with it because they take a little while to fill up their container with roots, and that is why you'll hear a lot of people say that Hoyas like to be root bound. So I don't like saying that any plant likes to be root bound because that means there's more roots than soil and that's never a good thing. You want to make sure that your plant is able to absorb nutrients um, even if you don't have it in soil. If you have it in semi-hydro or something along those lines you're adding nutrient solution to it for a reason. <laughs> so you want to make sure that those roots are nice and established before your plant can grow and then eventually bloom for you. So this is what I do really simple, straightforward, to the point. I throw my cuttings either in, this one's in perlite, and I have this one in moss. It's kind of just like whatever I have on hand. I haven't been buying moss anymore, so if it's shipped to me in moss, but you guys, I have only had this for a few weeks, and I don't know if you could see, there's already roots growing in there. There's already roots growing in there so very happy plants don't really have to water them look at that already rooted i got these from black cat gardener shop by the way this is the hoya species timmer t-i-m-o-r i don't know but i thought that the texture on them was really cool so obviously i had to have them and then this is the hoya irina irina it looks like a Callistophylla hybrid, so obviously I had to have it because it's one of my favorite Hoyas. So this is kind of just a no-brainer. If you're trying to up the humidity and you are on a budget, dropped it, but Ziploc bag. That's it. That's all you got to do. Obviously, if you have a plastic container, I like to go and get the plastic bins and use them. You guys have seen my prop boxes before. And if you haven't, I'm going to be going through a lot of those with you soon because we're bringing them all over to the new place and putting them in the greenhouse. So stay tuned for that. The other thing that I wanted to show you while I talk about fertilizing your Hoyas because I think that we forget sometimes to feed our plants. And like I was saying before, they need nutrients in order to keep growing especially if you see your plant growing or a plant that looks like it's got a peduncle and you want to help encourage it definitely give it fertilizer and if you want to encourage it even more a fertilizer with extra phosphorus is really good for promoting Hoya blooms now I don't know exactly why this particular mineral helps with blooming but it does so look for a fertilizer that has extra phosphorus in it. I'm not good with the ratios. I'm sorry. I don't know what those things mean or, or anything like that. I'd love to learn, but I'm just not there yet. So I can leave that information for you guys down below, but really honestly, just a quick Google search of like phosphorus for Hoya blooms will tell you the ratios and everything and what to look for. So it's up to you if you want to look into it, or I can leave the information if I remember down below. If I forget, Remind me and I'll tell you. So fertilizer, higher in phosphorus. I think that's why people use the orchid spray, if I'm not mistaken. I know a lot of people like to spray their Hoyas with the orchid fertilizer spray. And I don't know because I didn't actually Google it before filming this video. 
yay me. But I have a feeling that that fertilizer probably has the extra phosphorus in it, maybe, and that's why people use it on their Hoyas to help them grow and get them to bloom. But I don't really know. Don't quote me on it. I'm just saying, that's a thing that people do. I don't do it, but you can try it if you want to, if you have done it, and that's something that you do regularly with your Hoyas, then definitely leave it in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys. So that is, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. And then no surprise here, like I said, it really honestly depends on the Hoya. So I have a few that just bloom for me really easily, like the Bertonier, the species Affinity Bertonier is going to bloom for you and they're going to look pretty much exactly the same as this, just like a slightly lighter pink. And the Lacunosa, any Lacunosa variety is a really easy bloomer. I've been told that the Hoya Bella is an easy bloomer. Mine is really little, so... I don't think she's going to bloom anytime soon, but I have noticed the Callistophylla is a very easy bloomer. I've seen people's Callistophyllas blooming all over the internet, so it's not just me. This is a cutting from my mother plant. Ooh, just a little wet. I need to repot her because she's still in moss and she's definitely overdue to come out of here but uh, I have these are in the greenhouse so they're in a more humid situation so they're all kind of just like blooming like crazy for me even though I should have filmed this last week but I was having technical difficulties and they were all like actually in bloom and I was trying to catch them all but we'll catch them again it's still the beginning of the season they're gonna bloom a lot more so I will probably be doing lots of content on my Hoya blooms it's like my favorite thing. I have some that are supposed to have really weird big blooms that like I hope I can get to bloom one day, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Hoya Callistophylla. This is, I think, the shorter leaf variety. You could see what I mean when I say that the this one is probably some sort of hybrid. I don't know. They're very similar, but they're different enough that I need them both, obviously. This one, even though it's a cutting from my mother plant, my mother plant has two peduncles that are blooming for me constantly and it irritates the hell out of me if I'm going to be honest with you because she never grows a new leaf. She just keeps blooming and some of her old leaves are dying back and I'm like, girl, what are you doing? So I'm not mad that I have this baby plant that I started from her just in case something goes wrong with that one because she just does not look happy. But this one put out um, a peduncle and it looks like it wants to bloom very soon. It had a couple little mealy bugs on it that I had to clean off because they're just the bane of my existence. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go on ahead and say that I think the Hoya Callistophylla is an easy bloomer once it's established. It didn't do anything for quite some time and then just a few weeks ago I noticed that it put out this tendril and this peduncle on it. So that's why I tell people not to trim back these tendrils because eventually they will start putting out leaves and eventually you might get a peduncle out of it. So I know it's not the prettiest thing to you maybe in the world, but give it a trellis, something to climb on will actually encourage the growth as well. Forgot to mention that. Um, like this one I have over here. Let me show you really quick. This is my Hoya de Santhia, de Santa. Um, I have her around this trellis because, well, because it looks cute. This is from Bind Up. I can leave that linked down below for you guys. And I'm hoping that it's going to encourage her to put out some bigger leaves like this one. So having it vine around something definitely helps because that's why they throw out these tendrils. They're looking for something to climb on. And once you give them something to climb on, they're more likely to grow, kind of like aeroids do. So that's an option too. If you have one that's throwing out a lot of tendrils, you guys see this one, I kind of just like, I wrap it around <laughs> itself. They will start to wrap around themselves as well. Like they just kind of go crazy. So they'll look for anything to wrap around, even themselves. So Another one that I found is really easy to bloom for me is my Hoya Macrophylla. And this pot is very sun stressed and very mixed. It has, it mutated and gave me some pot of gold. 
but it hasn't done anything since then besides put out like these peduncles and I don't know if you could tell because it's very bright I'm sorry these peduncles look how long they are see how long they are that is how you know that it has bloomed over and over and over and over again as opposed to like these younger ones which also still has a mealy bug on it Ugh, I can't stand you guys they um their peduncles aren't as long like it even has like little baby peduncles over here you guys this plant is going crazy in the greenhouse she's getting sun stressed she's thirsty as hell <laughs> in this terracotta pot but if she wasn't in a greenhouse I probably would not have put her in here I got this one on a discount because it was broken but super duper beautiful plant so she started out as a regular macrophylla um, Alba marginata down here and then she threw out some regular green leaves and then after that she gave me what looks like a pot of gold with the inner variegation instead so I've been patiently waiting for this vine to continue to grow but it just keeps blooming instead do you see that? Do you see that huge peduncle? <laughs> it just keeps blooming. So that's how you know it's an old peduncle as opposed to a new one like this little baby one. You see how little it is. That doesn't have that like, I don't know, every time it blooms it kind of like, it grows. It's very strange. Very, very strange. But that's how you can tell um, how old the peduncle is, which is kind of interesting and then I have this Hoya CV which just stands for cultivar new 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 I don't know NUI I think is it and it just bloomed I don't know if you could see it has like the dead and I'm kind of bummed because I missed it but oh, did I just pull off the whole entire peduncle I think I did oh it's awesome so I don't know it's gonna bloom again but um this plant actually had that peduncle on it when I bought it and I was wondering if it was ever going to bloom but I think it's doing another one up here is that a little nubby nub yeah looks like another peduncle and mealybugs of course they're they love the blooms because the blooms are very sappy as you know I just licked the one I licked I swear I just recently cleaned there's I didn't eat any mealybugs I promise that would be nasty so again this is another one that's kind of like a callistophylla hybrid in case you didn't notice I like these so yeah this one's from homestead plants and um it's cute so I'm gonna go on ahead and confidently say that the Hoya callistophylla as well as any cultivar related to it may be an easy bloomer than other plants because honestly I've had like this Hoya curtisii for years it's never thrown anything that looks like a peduncle at me not once so I don't know if we'll ever see this thing bloom I've got a Wayetti eye that I've never seen bloom my Chelsea I've never seen bloom I've had a couple of Carnosas bloom for me in the past once you've seen a plant bloom a few times you know what it looks like you take a bunch of pictures of it and it's like dude I don't need you to keep doing it I need you to just like grow <laughs> so anyway that is it for this video you guys I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you found it helpful I apologize if I left anything out I just wanted to make sure that I highlight for you that there is no magic recipe to getting your Hoyas to bloom there are just things that you need to do to make sure that your Hoyas are happy and in the best environment for them to bloom you can give them everything absolutely everything in the world and they still won't bloom for you so please don't take it personally it's not you it's them <laughs> so go on out and buy yourself a plant that is a bit more of an easy bloomer look for one in the store that has a peduncle on it already and you're good you just need some peduncles boo boo and then you'll get some blooms so that is it for this video i hope that you guys enjoyed it i hope that you go and taste all your hoya blooms now fungus net what the hell Oh, it's because I took something out of the greenhouse. They're usually not in here. Yeah, we need to deep clean the greenhouse too. That's a thing. So, yeah. 
anyway, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If I forgot anything, definitely don't be afraid to ask me questions in the comments below. And if you want to see more Hoya content, definitely give this video a thumbs up. It helps a sister out. Don't forget to subscribe. Also helps me out. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me, so you don't miss the live stream notifications. There's a join button down there if you want to be a part of the official plant fam, help support this channel, get some extra perks. You guys will see some of those perks in the live chat. I'm excited to see what they look like. I think the members get like special badges and stuff that they get to use and like stickers and whatnot. So come hang out, be part of the plant fam. We have a private group chat on Instagram too where we hang out and get to know each other and talk about plants and pets and life and complain about work and all of those good things. So I appreciate you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Crash, what are you doing?